Hey everyone, when I built my current computer two years ago, I wasn't sure whether to go with Windows 11 or not, because it all seemed a bit too new. And also I do lots of video editing and I'd heard that some of Adobe software was a bit buggy on Windows 11. So I stuck with Windows 10. But a year ago, I finally gave in and upgraded to Windows 11 and I've had no major issues. If you're still on Windows 10 and get in constantly nagged to upgrade to Windows 11, should you do it? Or should you wait until next year when Microsoft officially cuts off Windows 10 support? Well, in this video, I'll touch on a few things that I like and dislike about Windows 11, including the really, really annoying start menu. I'll then cover what you'll probably need to relearn if you do upgrade to Windows 11 before discussing users who definitely should not upgrade to Windows 11. So the first thing that I really like about Windows 11 is how it's just so pretty. It just feels and looks quite nice and modern. Now, I'm not one of those people who gets distracted by bling. I have zero Apple products in my house, for example. But Windows 11 feels quite modern and fresh. I just enjoy using it. However, it's also a bit badly done at times because you'll be using your computer on the Windows 11 interface, then you'll click something and end up on the old style look and feel. It's a bit jarring and disconcerting and it almost feels like Microsoft just gave up halfway through. In general though, I do like it. This sort of ties into my second point, which is that Windows 11 is much more touch friendly than Windows 10. That's why Microsoft actually redesigned the whole UI, the user interface after all. Now you might be thinking, you know, so what, I've got my keyboard and my mouse, that's all I'll ever need. But so many devices are touch friendly nowadays, but I think that soon enough our desktop monitors will be touchscreen too. In fact, my next monitor will be a touch enabled one. We've already seen this trend with Chromebooks and various touchscreen laptops, and many schools use touchscreens in classrooms to teach their children too. So I personally think that touchscreens will be the future and I like that Windows 11 supports this more than Windows 10. The third thing I like about Windows 11 is that it just works. It's been really stable for me despite me being a power user. Performance when video editing and gaming has been fine. I don't experience any program crashes nor have I had any blue screen of deaths. Granted, Windows 10 was also super reliable for me too, but some people have delayed upgrading to Windows 11 purely due to reliability concerns and, in my experience, such fears are just not warranted. There's actually quite a lot that I like about Windows 11, but I don't want to waffle on too much here. So, the final thing I'm going to discuss is that I like Windows 11 integrates the AI system Copilot fairly closely into the operating system. I know that AI can sometimes be seen as an overblown fad, but in many cases, AI can be really useful, especially in office environments. So I like the windows are putting this front and center with, with a co-pilot icon and also bringing out a new line of keyboards with a specific AI key. AI is a whole other topic, but I think that this will be very important in the future. So I like that it's clearly integrated into Windows 11. With all that said, what do I hate about Windows 11? Well, nothing, hate is a strong word. Sorry, but here's three things that I dislike about it. Firstly, I dislike how inflexible the taskbar is, you know, the thing that runs across the bottom of the screen. In previous versions of Windows, you can easily make it bigger or smaller or move it to the left, right or top of your screen. But Windows 11 just doesn't allow this. Hi Windows, could I please move this taskbar over to the left, please? Nope. Oh, please, I really dislike the sidebar being on the bottom. Loads of websites and programs have on the left, after all. Read my lips. No. I'm so cool. But that pretty much sums it up. Lots of users have asked how they can modify the taskbar and just been told that Windows 11 doesn't support this anymore, which sucks. Now, you can actually change this by installing the third party software called Explorer Patcher, but you shouldn't really have to do this, in my opinion. My second annoyance was with the right-click menu, at least at first. When I first tried Windows 11, many of my most used programs like Notepad++ and 7-Zip weren't appearing in the right-click menu. I instead had to click Show More Options to find these other programs. Luckily, there's some easy ways of fixing the new Windows 11 menu, but I discuss them in a lot of detail in another video, so I won't repeat myself here. The short of it, though, is that now I kind of like the Windows 11 right-click menu, but it does depend on what programs you have installed, and whether or not they've been updated to be Windows 11 compatible. 
The third thing that I dislike about Windows 11 is that the start menu and search area is all a bit buggy. Sometimes it's slow to work at all for me after booting up. It also has the uncanny habit of constantly searching the web, even when I'm clearly looking for an installed program. And when it does search the web, it doesn't use your default browser like Chrome or Firefox. No, it opens Edge. It then nags you to set Edge as your default browser, which is annoying. It's also fairly distracting with it showing me trending searches and suggesting random games to me for some reason. Now you can adjust this by right clicking and going to start settings, but this is one area that I continue to dislike compared to Windows 10. I think that Microsoft is trying to be touch friendly and make this area a central hub that connects you to other parts of the OS uh, operating system and also the internet, but the start menu often still feels a bit clunky. With all that said though, if you do like the sound of Windows 11, what do you need to know before upgrading? Well, firstly, the process itself can take anywhere from 10 minutes to three hours. It all depends on how fast your computer is and also your internet connection. So make sure that you allow enough time for this, but certainly the upgrade itself is usually flawless and works really well. All your files and apps should be untouched. It kind of seems like I'm being sarcastic now, but I'm not. I've spoken to many people who have upgraded to Windows 11 without a hitch, which is good to know. Once you're in Windows 11, you should find it fairly similar to Windows 10, to be honest, apart from the fact that they've redesigned the user interface. Make sure that you get acquainted with the new start menu and also the right click menu. If you find some things missing, like you can't see your favorite app in the right click menu, then you should hopefully be able to tweak one of the many settings the Windows 11 has. But if you really dislike the new interface, programs like WinAero Tweaker and Explorer Patcher will allow you to tweak things further or simply restore the old Windows 10 look and feel. But this is really the only area that could potentially be an issue for you after upgrading from Windows 10, assuming they've got fairly modern hardware and computers. People seem to love or hate the new Windows 11 design. Before wrapping up though, there's some people who should simply not upgrade to Windows 11 yet. Firstly, Windows 11 doesn't work on all computers, especially ones that don't have something called a TPM module inside them. There are ways around this restriction actually, but in general, if your PC is a decade old, you might not be able to upgrade to Windows 11. Secondly, not all programs will work on Windows 11, especially older programs that haven't received recent updates. Some of these will just lead to minor annoyances like the fact the 7-zip doesn't appear in the new right-click menu. But if you're running quite an old bit of software, you might find that some features just will not work in Windows 11, like this user discovered on the ancient Epsom support software. However, it's not just old programs that might not work. Anytime that you plug a device into your computer, like a mouse, some headphones, or a printer, Windows will need to install drivers to make sure that that device works with your PC. If you have a fairly old printer, for example, the drivers just might not exist for Windows 11, as the same user found out with their 2009 era Canon printer, whoops. So if you have a peripheral, a plugged in device, that is fairly old, it might not work on Windows 11. And that's the key point. If your computer, programs, and peripherals are all from seven or eight years ago max, they should work fine because they'll all naturally have Windows 10 support baked in and therefore everything should work well with Windows 11 too. Both operating systems are actually quite similar under the hood. But anything older than eight to 10 years ago might be a struggle for Windows 11. Your only options then are either to not upgrade or look for an alternative program, printer, or, or whatever. If you decide not to upgrade though, just be aware that Microsoft have said that they intend to stop supporting Windows 10 in October 2025. This means that any new security flaws targeting Windows 10 could potentially affect your PC after that date, since Microsoft said they won't push fixes for those hacks and security issues anymore. Now, they might extend this deadline, but that's what they say right now, so it's worth bearing that in mind when you come to plan things out. And that wraps up today's video. Are you planning on giving in and upgrading to Windows 11, or maybe you've already upgraded? Please let me know down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the thumbs up button. This tells the YouTube algorithm that more people should see this video. Please also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and thanks for watching.